French fries from scratch on the flat top. We're gonna do it and we're gonna show you how we do it. And I'm talking all the way from scratch, from having the potato to having the French fry. You wanna see how we get it done? Stick around while we dig in. That's right, if you've never made homemade french fries, you've gotta try them at least one time in your life. And I'm gonna show you a really simple way that we do it here on the flat top today. We're doing the, uh, we're using the Sierra Pit Boss Griddle. It's right out here off to my right right now, getting nice and warm. We're bringing it up to temperature. But let's really quick before I explain the process of the cutting the fries and then we're gonna get them on, let's take a look at the groceries. Plain and simple, uh, potatoes and salt and pepper. <laughs> Actually, we've got a little teaser in here. As you can see, these two Dow Strong Night boxes here in the back, we have some unboxings that we're gonna be doing coming up in the next little bit. So stay tuned for these. We are totally geeked about what Dow Strong has sent us. Stay tuned for that. But uh, not pictured also, we are gonna be using a little bit of peanut oil. Now, we always say you do not need oil when you're cooking on the Sierra or the Ultimates because they're ceramic top. However, you kind of got to fry fries in oil and we're using peanut oil for flavor. If you do have a peanut allergy or someone that you're cooking for does, you can use vegetable oil, canola oil, any cooking oil should be just fine. We just like the flavor of the peanut oil and no allergies up in this piece. So here's what we did. We took the, the potatoes and today I'm using, actually I love this knife. This is the Dow Strong Shogun series, their chef's knife, and it just went right through these potatoes nice and easy. My goal was to go for shoestring fries is more like McDonald's consistency. As you can see, that didn't necessarily happen on all of them, but uh, we also like to use the, the, the fry cutters, but the industrial ones, the bigger ones, kind of expensive, but when you have a sharp, beautiful knife like you do with the, 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 with the Dow Strong, you can do these yourself. And I actually am getting better at my cuts the more I practice it. So, all right, once they were all cut up, we had to get the starchiness off the potato. So we went ahead and put them in this bowl of water. One thing that we've done in the past is we'll like parboil these, we'll put the bowl of, of water uh, of the fries in the microwave for like a minute or two today we're not doing that we're showing you just a very basic simple way once we are done with rinsing these as you can see in the bowl the water's a little cloudy that's the starchiness we want to see that because that means it's pulling off of the potatoes so once we're done with that we uh pulled out the potatoes and laid them out on these paper towels right here to dry them. We let them, uh, we patted them dry and we also let them sit for about 10 minutes to get completely dry and back in the bowl. And that's what brought us to this moment here. We are about to put them on the flat top. So first thing, we've got this thing. I can feel it is very hot. Now I know the angle of where this griddle is sitting. It is, the oil is going to go back this way. So I'm gonna start it here, get it back that way, throw the, the fries on so they can start cooking. So when I'm gonna try not to use too much oil, but of course we want enough oil for all of these fries. And there we go. Now we wanna just spread these out, make sure that they're all touching the surface. Gonna add just a little bit more oil here. Cool. Let it run down in there. All right, to make sure that they're all coated in the oil, I'm actually gonna toss them right now. After I got them all flattened out, I was like, wait a second, the other sides are not getting the oil. So we're gonna do this, set them down, and we got tongs, and now we just, after these are all spread out, we'll play the patience game where we just literally wait till they cook on each side, then we'll turn them, wait till it's cooked, turn them, turn them. Obviously, these are all different sizes, so they're gonna uh, take different lengths of time to cook. All right, I'm gonna try to flip these here. The tongs were not working. Um, they're too slippery. So we're just gonna take and just kind of flip them the best we can. You can see this one right here is already starting to brown. Nice, so that is what we're wanting to see. As you can see, we're only about seven or eight minutes in and some of these are getting nice and golden already. We just wanna make sure that we're getting them golden all the way around. Some of them are very not either. So that's the thing with them being different sizes. Uh, some of them are cooking faster than others. All right, now that these are partly, uh, partly done, I'm gonna go ahead and toss some salt on as well as pepper. And we're tossing. You can hear how crispy they are. Getting nice and crispy. GBD is what we're looking for. So now we're at a point where it looks like some of them can start coming off. So we're gonna start pulling them, 
some of these, they, they look dumb, but you just gotta make sure that they're looking GBD on both sides. That's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. All right, so these are all just about done. Got the nice crispiness. And so we're gonna just take and plate them up like so. So all in all, it's been about 15 to 17 minutes from the time we first put these down on the griddle. One final salting, just a little bit because these did get a good amount during the cook. And that's it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and let these sit for about five minutes to an hour to cool because these things are piping hot. But actually, it will just take a few minutes. We've got them here on this plate with a little, little bowl of ketchup and we're gonna dig in, so uh, hang tight. Well, as you can see, there they are in all their glory homemade fries. These things smell amazing, which by the way, we can get right into that. Uh, like we say, uh, it can look amazing. Um, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, like we say, it can smell amazing. Uh, can I get a smell yeah, Sherry? Smell yeah, you can. <laughs> but if this doesn't taste amazing, then this is all for nuts. Cheers, I'll eat to that, my brother. Mmm. Mmm. Good fry, good homemade fry. Tastes really good. The uh, the the peanut oil, I can definitely get a little, little taste of that, which is absolutely delicious. Try some of some ketchup. Mm. These are the type of fries I'd go to a restaurant for. They just have that delicious, almost like we said this before, when we've made fries when we were doing our uh, our poutine a while ago, they smelled and tasted a lot like the Five Guys, which they use the uh, peanut oil, and especially dipping it in the uh, the uh, pet ketchup. Mm. Let's go ahead and wrap, wrap this up. We hope you enjoyed that. We hope that gave you something else that you can cook on your griddle. If it is, make sure you give this a thumbs up. It's one way in which you can support us. Another way you can support us, actually a couple ways. We talk about our Epic Outdoor Griddle Cookbook, which is actually out now on all the bookstores, on all the websites, including Amazon. We've got that link below. And of course, we, you can pre-order our book, Smashed, which will be out in May. So aside from me coming and making this quick little banger, this easy how to do homemade fries at home, why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no matter what. With that, we bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on. Mm -hmm.